The reading of the word today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 1 through 31. These are passages that we've probably heard many times before, but putting them together puts them in a little different context and helps us to see a common theme between these three different stories that we have here. So listen for God's uh, word as it speaks to us uh, in this time and place. Jesus left that place and went to the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. And crowds again gathered around him, and as was his custom, he again taught them. Now some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then, in the house of the disciples, uh, then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her, and, she divorce, and if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The people were bringing little children to him then uh, in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up into his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him, and he asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall, you shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. You are to honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go. Sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Now when the rich man heard this, he was shocked and he went away grieving for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and he said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Now Peter began to say to him, Look, Jesus, we, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mother and children, fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But 
many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. May God add God's blessing to our understanding of these words for us today. If we hear these words, sometimes we think, wow, just like the disciples, how can any of us live up to these standards? <clears throat> but one of the things that Jesus is trying to do in all three of these vignettes here and throughout his entire ministry, if you look closely in the Gospels, is to create a vision of what the world should be. Not what it is, but what it should be. What God has designed it to be. And that vision is for us to live in harmony with one another. Now, any of us knows that if somebody has a lot of the world's goods and another person has very few of those goods, that it's pretty difficult for the person who has so little to look at that other person and say, why aren't you helping me out here? There can't be harmony as long as there is tremendous inequities between peoples. Harmony can only happen when there is equitable distribution of goods and services in this world. Jesus wanted to proclaim that all of us, not just the rich people, not just men, not just adults, we are all God's children. And we are deserving of respect and dignity. We are all equals in worth. All of us, Jesus told us again and again, are neighbors of one another. We are siblings to one another. We are to be treated as we would want to be treated equitably. Each as each has need. We are to share all that we have with one another, not just our loving thoughts, but also our possessions and the things that we have. It is relationships, Jesus told us again and again, that matter more than our possessions. We've heard in our own culture for some years now of a movement called Black Lives Matter. And some people have protested that, well, don't all lives matter? As if by saying that, everybody is treated equitably. But we know that in this culture, black lives are not treated equitably, not in the least. We see it again and again. It is necessary for sometimes us to be specific and say these lives matter because these lives have not been shown to matter by our society. And Jesus is doing the same thing in his society with regards to those who were not treated as equal. There are three groups here that Jesus talked about whose lives matter. Women's lives matter. Children's lives matter. Poor people's lives matter. That's what these three minions are all about. And they're all interconnected because these three groups are the groups in his society in which people least matter. Everybody was under the law according to the law. But we know that some are much more privileged than others because of the ways the law was written. In the first vignette, <clears throat> Jesus, and if we look at this through 21st century eyes, we're going to miss the whole point of this passage about divorce. It really was less about divorce than it is about the care of women. Men who divorced women in that age for frivolous reasons could do so with simply, as it says in this passage, a certificate. Just a certificate. I don't like this about you, therefore, divorce. And Jesus